I want to flash back to uh, one of the most familiar names in all of baseball when I was a kid growing up, and that is the last name of Necro. This is Joe Necro. I remember him pitching for those Houston Astros. I don't even want to get into the Emory Board thing. I, I think of other things when I think of he Joe had to Necro. Put that picture up there, right? <laughs> I think of that right there, and that is him uh, kissing his daughter, Natalie, who joins us now live. 23 years in the majors, but passed away, it seems like yesterday, in 2006 of a brain aneurysm, and Natalie joins Brandon and I. And I have to say this, I, I've told you this story, I think, off the air very quickly. I want to get to it on the air. I remember so clearly the last time I talked to your dad, I think it was in 2005, about your brother Lance, uh -huh. who was trying to make a career out of it at first base with the San Francisco Giants, and he asked me a question. He asked me, is my son acting like a professional? Is he treating you with respect? He wanted to know how his son was treating the media. Does that, that gives me chills to tell you that story. That just gave me chills. Does it surprise you to hear that? He was really no, concerned about how Lance not, was going. Not at all. Okay. Not at all. That, he, he was very, very adamant about us being very respectful and always brought up with manners. And so, no, that doesn't surprise me at all. That speaks volumes about the man and the family, which gets to this. Uh, your life as a family changed, I know, dramatically when he passed away. It was over in the blink of an eye, a brain aneurysm. So how did that change your life, Natalie, and how did that set up the foundation that we have you on sure. to talk about? Well, when it first happened, I didn't even know what an aneurysm was. Right. And when I left the hospital, um, everything happened so fast. And when I left the hospital, I just remember how lost I felt. And there wasn't anywhere to go for support. Nobody was giving me any sort of information about um, who to turn to. And so I basically just said, well, I'm just going to start something myself because I can't be the only person experiencing this. And sure enough, that started with one support group here in Phoenix. And now we've got 34 across the country and just growing rapidly. The numbers are astounding. Six million people with unruptured brain aneurysms, right? And that's a minimum. I mean, it, it says anywhere from six million to 15 million. And it inspired my friend Brandon Webb here. It even, I didn't realize he had a, a tuxedo laying around, <laughs> but you were a part of the event, the knuckleball, right? Yes. And you got him to go out. How did you do that? Well, it cost me a little money, but no, I'm it just kidding. It cost me money. I, it did cost him money. I did buy it did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, Brandon, Come prepare it again this year with I your will. credit card. You tell us about that event and why you were there, Brandon. Uh, was, uh, you know, Natalie had reached out and, and asked my wife and I to to join, uh, you know, and sit at a table of, of the one of some of the head doctors there at Banner, and I was more than happy to do so. Um, I think too is is the awareness issue that I did not know much about brain aneurysms at all. So I think it's something that needs to be, you know, brought out to the public and people know about. Yeah. We know a lot of people don't realize that an aneurysm is actually a form of a stroke. And when you say uh, the word stroke, everybody knows somebody that's had one. So when you put it in that context, it's definitely a lot more relatable and people, it, it brings the awareness a lot um, more to the forefront. Can you say the phrase early detection like we say about so many other things nowadays? Is early detection something that you can jump onto and say that's what you I can. Want. Okay. You can. There are, there's definitely a hereditary component to okay. it as well. Um, there's some symptoms that you can look out for, of course. And the um, rule of thumb is if you ever experience what you consider to be the worst headache of your life, that means get to an ER immediately. How can people help out? How can they jump on if they can't make it to the knuckleball? What else can they do to help? Uh, well, the website's joanecrofoundation.org. Very, very simple. Um, we do events all across the country, but you know, it's all about just um, continuing to create more awareness, educating the public, and letting more people know about this, the symptoms and the warning signs to look for. And you know, we're going to make a difference, and that's what's most important. If I said to you, Natalie Necro, that I think your dad would be very proud of your endeavor, no matter how it came to you, would you believe me? Yeah. I think so, too. It's great to have Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Say hello to Lance. I will. All right. Absolutely. That's Thank Natalie you. Natalie Necro will take a break here on uh, Diamondbacks Live for a great cause and a great reason. We're glad to have her.